What's going on everybody, Boris here at your Ecology Design Studio. Today we're going to explore the world of sensitivity analysis by looking at how we can account for uncertainty in estimations. To be more specific, we'll see how uncertainty in costs, benefits, and growth rates affect the net present value of a project. What happens when the projected growth rate does not realize and drops? What happens if the estimated costs underestimate the true cost of the project? Conversely, what happens if the projected growth rate is too low, costs are overestimated, and benefits underestimated? We'll also look at the distribution of randomly generated projections and see the likelihood of obtaining a good or a bad result. Check the description for a list of formulas used in this tutorial and look for a link to this Excel document on our website. Let's jump right in. We have a scenario with a base, best, and worst case possibility, respectively. The base has cost of $55,000, $12,900 of annual benefits, and a discount rate of 5%, which is uh, not on here. The growth rate can range anywhere from 0.9% to um, anywhere to 3%. We use a Monte Carlo iterative analysis to account for uncertainty in our variables. We start by generating a random value for costs, benefits, and growth rates within the parameters on the left. The formula in cell F2 is as follows. We type in equals to begin a formula, um, rand for a random value with uh, just the parentheses with nothing inside. Uh, times uh, another parentheses d2 minus c2 plus c2 for costs and we press enter Excel has calculated a random cost value of $52,180.50 the value you get on your screen will be different from this one as Excel will generate a unique random value also, keep in mind that every time we do something with Excel, a new random value will be generated. What this formula does is assign a random number between 0 and 1, multiplies it by the high minus the low values, and adds in the minimum value again for a unique cost with a random uh, value between $42,000 and $61,000. Now click and drag the fill handle on the bottom right. And the formula will be filled in for the benefits and growth rates respectively since we use relative rather than absolute cell values in the formula. Notice how cells N2 through P2 change to reflect the values in cells F2 through F4. This will come in handy later on. Right then, we're now in the scenario overview piece here in the middle. The discount factor formula in cell F, uh, I2 is equals 1 divided by 1.05 to the power of h2 with h2 being a reference of the year remember that the formula for the discount factor is 1 divided by 1 plus r uh, to the power of t we use 1.05 because the discount rate is 5 percent or 0 0.05 and of course the discount rate for the first period is 1 meaning that we value money in this period um, at its face value we enter costs as negative so we don't have to subtract them out later in the future value column, we enter the future value of the benefits and costs, accounting for growth. So in J2, we type equals F2. Then in J3, we type equals F3. And in cell J4, we type in the formula necessary to account for growth rates. At year 0, we incur randomly generated costs within parameters at F2. At year 1, we get benefits in cell F3. In year 2, we get the same benefits time, times whatever growth rate is in cell F4. The formula is equals J3 times parentheses 1 plus F4 in absolute terms. We use absolute cell references for the growth rate because we want it to come from the same cell every time. The formula for the present value in K2 is I2 multiplied by J2. So the discount rate times the future value to account for the time value of money or a preference for current consumption versus future consumption. Now use the fill handle and fill out all cells for all five years of the project by clicking and dragging all the way down. So we do that for the discount rate, we do that for the future value, and we do that for the present value. 
the number the number in bold on the bottom here is the net present value since our costs are already negative all we have to do is sum the values in the present value column to obtain the NPV now we have all the information necessary to conduct a Monte Carlo analysis in cells M3 to M102 we have 100 iterations so we'll use Excel to generate 100 different costs, benefits, and growth rates within the established ranges and store the values in the range N3 through Q102. Select this range. You can select the first row and then uh, use Control shift and the down arrow, or just click and drag. I'm going to select the first row, and then I'm going to press Control shift and down arrow twice and select that entire range. Now go to your Data tab on the ribbon and select What If Analysis. I go to Data what if analysis data table leave the row input cell blank and in column input cell click on a blank cell outside of your range um, just anywhere any blank cell and press OK or enter we now have 100 values for all costs benefits and growth rates and net present values Notice that each time you click Redo Anything in Excel, it spits out a new random value and all of the values change. This is why we have the static NPV column, where we copy and paste the values only from column Q. That way, if we have to have several static NPV columns, each time Excel recalculated the random numbers in cells F2 through F4, we can store a new set of net present values. Given the law of large numbers, this can be a very useful way to reduce sampling error and uncertainty. Now that we've done this, we can calculate the average, standard deviation, and minimum and maximum value of this set of MPVs. Having copied the net present value column into column R, we can now calculate the average, standard deviation, and minimum and maximum values. Notice that the first row um, in the column R is blank because the first row, um, N2, O2, P2, and Q2, reflect the values uh, F2, F3, F4, and K8, respectively. There's nothing for the static MPV, there's no formula reference for the static MPV, and that column itself is not used um, in the what if analysis by Excel. What Excel does is it, it, it takes the values in this first row and uses them as a reference of, of what it needs to generate 100 iterations for. Just to keep things in perspective, uh, I'm keeping this first row blank. Uh, so the range is going to be R2 through R, or I'm sorry, R3 through R102. So when we calculate the average, press enter and type in average, parentheses R3 through R102. And press enter. For standard deviation, type in STDEV and then R3 through R102 and press enter. For the minimum, press enter, type in min parentheses and the same range. And then the same thing for the maximum, type in equals max parentheses R3 through R102 and press enter. Make sure you have the letter um, for a column desi uh, designation in each part of your range when you type in the formula, otherwise you get that little error message. And now we have the measures of central tendency for the static MPV column. We can see that the average is going to be $6,634.45 the standard deviation is $8,000, uh, the minimum is $8,786, and the maximum is $22,000. That means that the net present value on average is going to be uh, $6,600. 68% uh, of uh, the values generated uh, are going to lie between um, six, $6,600 plus $8,000, so 14,000 to 6,600 minus 8,000, so negative 2,000. So the net present, the 68% of the net present values for this project are going to lie from negative $2,000 to $14,000. Uh, the very worst case scenario is going to see um, a loss 
of capital of almost $9,000, whereas the very best uh, estimate uh, in this analysis yields a net present value of almost $23,000. If I were me, uh, depending on my, on my risk preference, I would take this project because the likelihood of obtaining a good positive NPV seems to be higher um, or at least seems to compensate for any potential loss. Um, as we can see, 68% of the values are going to be within that first standard deviation, which means that 34% are going to be 6,600 and below, all the way down to negative 2,000. The decision to invest in this project or not depends not only on the net present value, but also on your risk preference. If, for example, you're doing this for a retirement fund, you may not want to take this project as there is a possibility to lose almost $9,000. On the other hand, if you're working for a growth fund, this would be a great investment as the maximum NPV possible is quite high at almost $23,000. Well folks, that's it for this Monte Carlo and uncertainty tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, let us know. Don't forget to check the description and our website for more information. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on an Arcology Designs production.